Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Wikipedia article audio Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, also known as the Gates Foundation, is a private foundation founded by Bill and Melinda Gates. It was launched in 2000, and is said to be the largest private foundation in the U.S., holding $38 billion in assets. The primary aims of the foundation are, globally, to enhance healthcare and reduce extreme poverty, and in America, to expand educational opportunities and access to information technology. The foundation, based in Seattle, Washington, is controlled by its three trustees, Bill and Melinda Gates, and Warren Buffett. Other principal officers include CO Chair William H. Gates, Sr., and Chief Executive Officer Susan Desmond Hellman. It had an endowment of $44.3 billion US dollars as of December 31, 2014. The scale of the foundation and the way it seeks to apply business techniques to giving makes it one of the leaders in venture philanthropy, though the foundation itself notes that the philanthropic role has limitations. In 2007, its founders were ranked as the second most generous philanthropists in America, and Warren Buffett the first. As of May 16, 2013, Bill Gates had donated $28 billion US dollars to the foundation. Since its foundation, the foundation has endowed and supported a broad range of social, health, and education developments including the establishment of the Gates Cambridge Scholarships at Cambridge University. History Warren Buffett Donation In 1997, the foundation was formed as the William H. Gates Foundation. During the foundation's following years, funding grew to two billion US dollars. On June 15, 2006, Gates announced his plans to transition out of a day-to-day -day role with Microsoft, effective July 31, 2008, to allow him to devote more time to working with the foundation. In 2005, Bill and Melinda Gates, along with the musician Bono, were named by Time as Persons of the Year 2005 for their outstanding charitable work. In the case of Bill and Melinda Gates, the work referenced was that of this foundation. In April 2010, Gates was invited to visit and speak at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology where he asked the students to take on the hard problems of the world in their futures. He also explained the nature and philosophy of his philanthropic endeavors. In 2010, the Foundation's founders started the Commission on Education of Health Professionals for the 21st Century, entitled Transforming Education to Strengthen Health Systems in an Interdependent World. A 2011 survey of grantees found that many believed the foundation did not make its goals and strategies clear and sometimes did not understand those of the grantees, that the foundation's decision and grant-making procedures were too opaque, and that its communications could be more consistent and responsive. The foundation's response was to improve the clarity of its explanations, make orientation calls to grantees upon awarding grants, tell grantees who their foundation contact is, give timely feedback when they receive a grantee report, and establish a way for grantees to provide anonymous or attributed feedback to the foundation. The foundation also launched a podcast series. Activities In 2013, Hillary Clinton launched a partnership between the Foundation and the Clinton Foundation to gather and study data on the progress of women and girls around the world since the 1995 United Nations Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing. This is called No Ceilings, the Full Participation Project. On June 25, 
2006, Warren Buffett pledged to give the foundation approximately 10 million Berkshire Hathaway Class B shares spread over multiple years through annual contributions, with the first year's donation of 500,000 shares being worth approximately 1.5 billion US dollars. Buffett set conditions so that these contributions do not simply increase the foundation's endowment, but effectively work as a matching contribution, doubling the foundation's annual giving. Bloomberg News noted, Buffett's gift came with three conditions for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill or Melinda Gates must be alive and active in its administration, it must continue to qualify as a charity and each year it must give away an amount equal to the previous year's Berkshire gift, plus an additional amount equal to 5% of net assets. Buffett gave the foundation two years to abide by the third requirement. The Gates Foundation received 5% of the shares in July 2006 and will receive 5% of the remaining earmarked shares in the July of each following year. In July 2013, Buffet announced another donation of his company's Class B stock, this time worth $2 billion, to the Gates Foundation. Program Areas and Grant Database To maintain its status as a charitable foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation must donate funds equal to at least 5% of its assets each year. As of April 2014, the foundation is organized into four program areas under Chief Executive Officer Susan Desmond Hellman, who sets strategic priorities, monitors results, and facilitates relationships with key partners. The foundation maintains an online database of grants on its website which includes for each grant the name of the grantee organization the purpose of the grant and the amount. This database is publicly available. In November 2014, the Gates Foundation announced that they were adopting an open access policy for publications and data, to enable the unrestricted access and reuse of all peer-reviewed published research funded by the foundation, including any underlying data sets. This move has been widely applauded by those who are working in the area of capacity building and knowledge sharing. Its terms have been called the most stringent among similar OA policies. As of January 1, 2015 their open access policy is effective for all new agreements. In March 2017, it was confirmed that the open access policy, Gates Open Research would be based on the same initiative launched in 2016 by Wellcome Trust in their Wellcome Open Research policy launched in partnership with F1000 Research. Open Access Policy The following table lists the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation's committed funding as recorded in their International Aid Transparency Initiative publications. The Gates Foundation announced in October 2013 that it would join the IATI. The IATI publications only include a subset of Gates Foundation grants, and contain few grants before 2009. The Gates Foundation states on the IATI registry site that reporting starts from 2009 and excludes grants related to our U.S. programs and grants that if published could harm our employees, grantees, partners, or the beneficiaries of our work. Funds for Grants in Developing Countries the following table lists the top receiving organizations to which the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has committed funding, between 2009 and 2015. The table again only includes grants recorded in the Gates Foundation's IATI publications. Financials the foundation explains on its website that its trustees divided the organization into two entities, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Trust. 
The Foundation section, based in Seattle, U.S., focuses on improving health and alleviating extreme poverty, and its trustees are Bill and Melinda Gates and Warren Buffett. The Trust section manages the investment assets and transfer proceeds to the Foundation as necessary to achieve the Foundation's charitable goals it holds the assets of Bill and Melinda Gates, who are the sole trustees, and receives contributions from Buffett. The Foundation posts its audited financial statements and 990 PF forms on the financials section of its website as they become available. At the end of 2012, the Foundation registered a cash sum of $4,998,000, down from $10,810,000 at the end of 2011. Unrestricted net assets at the end of 2012 were worth $31,950,613,000 US dollars, while total assets were worth $37,176,777,000 US dollars. Trust Investments As of 2016, the foundation appeared to have the following stakes in investments, Arcos Dorados Holdings 2.36% Stake, AutoNation, Inc. 1.56% Stake Berkshire Hathaway Class B Stock 6.59% Stake, British Petroleum 0.24% Stake, Canadian National Railway CO. 2.06% Stake, Caterpillar, Inc. 1.77% Stake, Coca-Cola CO. 0.77% Stake Crown Castle International Corp. 1.60% Stake, ExxonMobil 0.19% Stake, FedEx Corp. 0.97% Stake, FEMSA 3.06% Stake, Liberty Global 2.12% Stake, McDonald's Corp. 1.09% Stake Republic Services, Inc. 0.37% Stake, Shell, 5.5 million US dollars, Televisa 2.9% Stake, Walmart 0.36% Stake, Waste Management, Inc. 3.97% Stake Christopher Elias leads the Foundation's efforts to combat extreme poverty through grants as President of the Global Development Programme. In March 2006, the Foundation announced a US$5 million US dollar grant for the International Justice Mission, a human rights organization based in Washington, D.C., U.S. to work in the area of sex trafficking. The official announcement explained that the grant would allow the IJM to create a replicable model for combating sex trafficking and slavery that would involve the opening of an office in a region with high rates of sex trafficking, following research. The office was opened for three years for the following purposes, conducting undercover investigations, training law enforcement, rescuing victims, ensuring appropriate aftercare, and seeking perpetrator accountability. The IJM used the grant money to found Project Lantern and established an office in the Philippine city of Cebu. In 2010, the results of the project were published in which the IJM stated that Project Lantern had led to an increase in law enforcement activity in sex trafficking cases, an increase in commitment to resolving sex trafficking cases among law enforcement officers trained through the project, and an increase in services like shelter, counseling and career training provided to trafficking survivors. At the time that the results were released, the IJM was exploring opportunities to replicate the model in other regions. In October 2000, 
William Gates established the Gates Cambridge Scholarships which allow students and scholars from the US and around the world to study at Cambridge University, one of the top universities in the world. The Gates Cambridge Scholarship has often been compared to the Rhodes Scholarship, given its similarly international scope and substantial endowment. In 2000, the Gates Foundation endowed the Scholarship Trust with $210 million to help outstanding graduate students outside of the United Kingdom study at the University of Cambridge. The Gates Foundation has continued to contribute funds to expand the scholarship, making it one of the largest and best endowed scholarships in the world. The Gates Cambridge Scholarship accepts less than 0.3% of applicants and remains extremely competitive. Each year, approximately 100 new graduate students from around the world receive funding to study at Cambridge University. Global Development Division The Water, Sanitation and Hygiene Program of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was launched in mid-2005 as a learning initiative, and became a full-fledged program under the Global Development Division in early 2010. The Foundation has since 2005 undertaken a wide range of efforts in the WASH sector involving research, experimentation, reflection, advocacy, and field implementation. In 2009, the Foundation decided to refocus its WASH effort mainly on sustainable sanitation services for the poor, using non-piped sanitation services, and less on water supply. This was because the sanitation sector was generally receiving less attention from other donors and from governments, and because the foundation believed it had the potential to make a real difference through strategic investments. Gates Cambridge Scholarships In mid-2011, the foundation announced in its new water, sanitation, Hygiene Strategy Overview that its funding now focuses primarily on sanitation, particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, because access to improved sanitation is lowest in those regions. Their grant-making focus has been since 2011 on sanitation science and technology, delivery models at scale, urban sanitation markets, building demand for sanitation, measurement and evaluation as well as policy, advocacy and communications. Global Development Division, Global Health Division, United States Division, Global Policy and Advocacy Division In mid-2011, the foundation stated that they had committed more than 265 million US dollars to the water, sanitation and hygiene sector over the past 5 years, i.e. since about 2006. For the time period of about 2008 to mid 2015, all grants awarded to water, Sanitation and hygiene projects totaled a value of around 650 million US dollars, according to the publicly available grant database. Improved sanitation in the developing world is a global need, but a neglected priority, as shown by the data collected by the Joint Monitoring Program for Water Supply and Sanitation of UNICEF and WHO. This program is tasked to monitor progress towards the Millennium Development Goal relating to drinking water and sanitation. About 1 billion people have no sanitation facility whatsoever and continue to defecate in gutters, behind bushes or in open water bodies, with no dignity or privacy. This is called open defecation and it poses significant health risks. India is the country with the highest number of people practicing open defecation, around 600 million people. The foundation has been funding many sanitation research and demonstration projects in India since about 2011. 2004 Indian Ocean Earthquake, 
the foundation made total grant donations of 3 million US dollars to various charities to help with the aid effort for victims of the earthquake. These charities include, CARE International, International Rescue Committee, Mercy Corps, Save the Children, and World Vision, 2005 Kashmir Earthquake. The foundation made a donation of 500,000 US dollars for the earthquake. In 2014, the Gates Foundation released flexible funds in the order of 50 million US dollars to United Nations agencies and other organizations involved in the work against the deadly disease Ebola in West Africa. In 2011, the foundation launched a program called Reinvent the Toilet Challenge with the aim to promote the development of innovations in toilet design to benefit the 2.5 billion people that do not have access to safe and effective sanitation. This program has generated significant interest of the mainstream media. It was complemented by a program called Grand Challenges Explorations which involved grants of 100,000 US dollars each in the first round. Both funding schemes explicitly excluded project ideas that relied on centralized sewerage systems or are not compatible with development country contexts. Financial Assistance Agricultural Development Water, Sanitation, and Hygiene Technology Innovations Since the launch of the Reinvent the Toilet Challenge, more than a dozen research teams, mainly at universities in the US, Europe, India, China, and South Africa, have received grants to develop innovative on-site and off-site waste treatment solutions for the urban poor. The grants were in the order of 400,000 US dollars for their first phase, followed by typically 1 to 3 million USD for their second phase. Many of them investigated resource recovery or processing technologies for excreta or fecal sludge. The Global Fund to Fight AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria the foundation has donated more than $6.6 .6 billion for global health programs, including over $1.3 billion US dollars donated as of 2012 on malaria alone, greatly increasing the dollars spent per year on malaria research. Before the Gates' efforts on malaria, malaria drug makers had largely given up on producing drugs to fight the disease and the foundation is the world's largest donor to research on diseases of the poor. With the help of Gates-funded vaccination drives, deaths from measles in Africa have dropped by 90% since 2000. The Reinvent the Toilet Challenge is focused on reinventing the flush toilet. The aim was to create a toilet that not only removes pathogens from human excreta, but also recovers resources such as energy, clean water, and nutrients. It should operate off the grid without connections to water, sewer, or electrical networks. Finally, it should cost less than 5 US cents per user per day. High-tech toilets for tackling the growing public health problem of human waste are gaining increasing attention, but this focus on a technology fix has also been criticized by many in the sector. However, low-tech solutions may be more practical in poor countries, and research is also funded by the foundation for such toilets. The Reinvent the Toilet Challenge is a long-term research and development effort to develop a hygienic, stand-alone toilet. This challenge is being complemented by another investment program to develop new technologies for improved pit latrine emptying and fecal sludge processing. The aim of the Omni processor is to convert excreta into beneficial products such as energy and soil nutrients with the potential to develop local business and revenue. Polio Eradication In 2006, the foundation provided 86 million US dollars toward efforts attempting to eradicate poliomyelitis, 
the Gavi Alliance, the foundation gave the Gavi Alliance a donation of 750 million US dollars on January 25, 2005, Children's Vaccine Program, the Children's Vaccine Program, run by the Program for Appropriate Technology in Health received a donation of 27 million US dollars to help vaccinate against Japanese encephalitis on December 9, 2003, University of Washington Department of Global Health. The foundation provided approximately 30 million US dollars for the foundation of the new Department of Global Health at the University of Washington in Seattle, US. The donation promoted three of the foundation's target areas, Education, Pacific Northwest and Global Health, HIV Research. The foundation donated a total of 287 million US dollars to various HIV/AIDS researchers. The money was split between 16 different research teams across the world, on the condition that the findings are shared amongst the teams. ERA's Global TB Vaccine Foundation, the foundation gave the ERA's Global TB Vaccine Foundation more than 280 million US dollars to develop and license an improved vaccine against tuberculosis for use in high burden countries, cheaper high tech tuberculosis test, in August 2012, the foundation, in partnership with PEPFAR, USAID, and United announced they had finalized an agreement to reduce the cost of a commercial TB test from 16 US dollars and 86 cents to 9 US dollars and 98 cents this test can take the place of smear microscopy a technique first developed in the 1880s by Robert Cook Smear microscopy often does not show TB infection in persons who are also CO infected with HIV, whereas the gene expert system can show TB in the CO infected patient. In addition, the system can show whether the particular TB strain is resistant to the bactericidal antibiotic rifampicin, a widely accepted indicator of the presence of multi drug resistant tuberculosis. Visceral Leishmaniasis Research, the foundation awarded the Hebrew University of Jerusalem S. Coven Center for the Study of Infectious and Tropical Diseases a 5 million US dollar grant in 2009 for research into visceral leishmaniasis, an emerging parasitic disease in Ethiopia, Africa, where it is frequently associated with HIV-AIDS and is a leading cause of adult illness and death. The project, a collaborative effort with Addis Ababa University, will gather data for analysis to identify the weak links in the transmission cycle and devise methods for control of the disease. In 2005 the foundation provided a 30 million US dollar grant to the Institute for One World Health to support the non-profit pharmaceutical companies VL work in the rural communities of India, Bangladesh, and Nepal. By September 2006, the company had received approval from the Indian Body Drug Controller General of India for the paromomycin intramuscular injection a drug that provides an effective cure for VL following a 21-day course. In 2010 Raj Shankar Ghosh, the regional director for the South Asia Institute for One World Health, explained that the foundation funded the majority of our work in the development of the drug, Next Generation Condom, the foundation gave 100,000 US dollars to 11 applicants in November 2013 to develop an improved condom, that is, one that significantly preserves or enhances pleasure, in order to improve uptake and regular use, according to the Gates Foundation's Grand Challenges in Global Health. Website Further grants of up to 1 million US dollar will be given to projects that are successful, neglected tropical diseases, alongside WHO, the governments of the United States, United Kingdom and United Arab Emirates, 
and the World Bank, the Foundation endorsed the London Declaration on Neglected Tropical Diseases, to eradicate, eliminate and intensify control of 17 selected diseases by 2015 and 2020, at a meeting on January 30, 2012, held at the Royal College of Physicians in London, UK. Gates was the principal organiser responsible for bringing together the heads of 13 of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies and the foundation's monetary commitment to the declaration was US$363 million US dollar over five years. On April 3, 2014, the two-year anniversary of the declaration, Gates attended a meeting in Paris, France, at which participants reviewed the progress that had been made against 10 neglected tropical diseases. The foundation committed a further 50 million US dollars, together with 50 million US dollars from the Children's Investment Fund Foundation and 120 million US dollars from the World Bank, Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations a global group tasked with more quickly developing vaccines against infectious disease threats worldwide was launched on January 8, 2017 by a coalition of governments and non-profit groups including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations funded with an initial investment of $460 million from Germany, Japan, Norway, the Wellcome Trust and the Gates Foundation, aims to develop vaccines against known infectious disease threats that could be deployed quickly to contain outbreaks before they become global health emergencies, the group said in a statement at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Some examples include Since 2011, the president of the Global Health Programme is Trevor Mundell. The foundation has donated billions of dollars to help sufferers of AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria, protecting millions of children from death at the hands of preventable diseases. However, a 2007 investigation by the Los Angeles Times claimed there are three major unintended consequences with the foundation's allocation of aid. First, Sub-Saharan Africa already suffered from a shortage of primary doctors before the arrival of the Gates Foundation, but by pouring most contributions into the fight against such high-profile killers as AIDS, Gates grantees have increased the demand for specially trained, higher-paid clinicians, diverting staff from basic care in Sub-Saharan Africa. This brain drain adds to the existing doctor shortage and pulls away additional trained staff from children and those suffering from other common killers. Second, the focus on a few diseases has shortchanged basic needs such as nutrition and transportation. Third, Gates funded vaccination programs have instructed caregivers to ignore even discourage patients from discussing ailments that the vaccinations cannot prevent. Examples of Transformative Technologies Research In response, the Gates Foundation has said that African governments need to spend more of their budgets on public health than on wars, that the foundation has donated at least $70 million to help improve nutrition and agriculture in Africa in addition to its disease-related initiatives and that it is studying ways to improve the delivery of health care in Africa. Both insiders and external critics have suggested that there is too much deference to Bill Gates's personal views within the Gates Foundation, insufficient internal debate, and pervasive group think. Critics also complain that Gates Foundation grants are often awarded based on social connections and ideological allegiances rather than based on formal external review processes or technical competence. Critics have suggested that Gates' approach to global health and agriculture favors the interests of large pharmaceutical and agribusiness companies over the interests of the people of developing countries. Other Global Initiatives 
Global Health Division United States Division The Global Health Program's other significant grants include Under President Alan Galston, the United States program has made grants such as the following. Up to 2013, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation provided $71 million to Planned Parenthood, the primary U.S. abortion provider, and affiliated organizations. In 2014, Melinda Gates has stated that the foundation has decided not to fund abortion. In response to questions about this decision, Gates stated in a June 2014 blog post that she struggled with the issue and that the emotional and personal debate about abortion is threatening to get in the way of the life-saving consensus regarding basic family planning. In 1997, the charity introduced a U.S. Libraries initiative with a goal of ensuring that if you can get to a public library, you can reach the Internet. Only 35% of the world's population has access to the Internet. The Foundation has given grants, installed computers and software, and provided training and technical support in partnership with public libraries nationwide in an effort to increase access and knowledge. Helping provide access and training for these resources, this foundation helps move public libraries into the digital age. Most recently, the foundation gave a 12.2 million US dollar grant to the Southeastern Library Network to assist libraries in Louisiana and Mississippi on the Gulf Coast, many of which were damaged or destroyed by Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Funding Abortion a key aspect of the Gates Foundation's U.S. efforts involves an overhaul of the country's education policies at both the K-12 and college levels, including support for teacher evaluations and charter schools and opposition to seniority-based layoffs and other aspects of the education system that are typically backed by teachers' unions. It spent $373 million on education in 2009. It has also donated to the two largest national teachers' unions. The foundation was the biggest early backer of the Common Core State Standards Initiative. In October 2017 it was announced that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation would spend more than $1.7 billion over five years to pay for new initiatives in public education. One of the foundation's goals is to lower poverty by increasing the number of college graduates in the United States, and the organization has funded reimagining aid design and delivery grants to think tanks and advocacy organizations to produce white papers on ideas for changing the current system of federal financial aid for college students, with the goal of increasing graduation rates. One of the ways the foundation has sought to increase the number of college graduates is to get them through college faster, but that idea has received some pushback from organizations of universities and colleges. As part of its education-related initiatives, the foundation has funded journalists, think tanks, lobbying organizations, and governments. Millions of dollars of grants to news organizations have funded reporting on education and higher education, including more than $1.4 million to the Education Writers Association to fund training for journalists who cover education. While some critics have feared the foundation for directing the conversation on education or pushing its point of view through news coverage, the foundation has said it lists all its grants publicly and does not enforce any rules for content among its grantees, who have editorial independence. Union activists in Chicago have accused Gates Foundation Grantee Teach Plus, which was founded by new teachers and advocates against seniority-based layoffs, of astroturfing.
The K-12 and higher education reform programs of the Gates Foundation have been criticized by some education professionals, parents, and researchers because they have driven the conversation on education reform to such an extent that they may marginalize researchers who do not support Gates' predetermined policy preferences. Several Gates-backed policies such as small schools, charter schools, and increasing class sizes have been expensive and disruptive, but some studies indicate they have not improved educational outcomes and may have caused harm. Examples of some of the K-12 reforms advocated by the Foundation include closing ineffective neighborhood schools in favor of privately run charter schools, extensively using standardized test scores to evaluate the progress of students, teachers, and schools, and merit pay for teachers based on student test scores. Critics also believe that the Gates Foundation exerts too much influence over public education policy without being accountable to voters or taxpayers. Some of the Foundation's educational initiatives have included Critics say the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has overlooked the links between poverty and poor academic achievement, and has unfairly demonized teachers for poor achievement by underprivileged students. They contend that the Gates Foundation should be embracing anti-poverty and living wage policies rather than pursuing untested and empirically unsupported education reforms. Critics say that Gates-backed reforms such as increasing the use of technology in education may financially benefit Microsoft and the Gates family. The Foundation Trust invests undistributed assets, with the exclusive goal of maximizing the return on investment. As a result, its investments include companies that have been criticized for worsening poverty in the same developing countries where the foundation is attempting to relieve poverty. These include companies that pollute heavily and pharmaceutical companies that do not sell into the developing world. In response to press criticism, the foundation announced in 2007 a review of its investments to assess social responsibility. It subsequently cancelled the review and stood by its policy of investing for maximum return, while using voting rights to influence company practices. In October 2006, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation was split into two entities, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Trust, which manages the endowment assets and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which conducts all operations and grant-making work, and it is the entity from which all grants are made. Also announced was the decision to spend all of resources within 20 years after Bill's and Melinda's deaths. This would close the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation Trust and effectively end the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. In the same announcement it was reiterated that Warren Buffett, has stipulated that the proceeds from the Berkshire Hathaway shares he still owns at death are to be used for philanthropic purposes within 10 years after his estate has been settled. Libraries Education The plan to close the Foundation Trust is in contrast to most large charitable foundations that have no set closure date. This is intended to lower administrative costs over the years of the Foundation Trust's life and ensure that the Foundation Trust not fall into a situation where the vast majority of its expenditures are on administrative costs, including salaries, with only token amounts contributed to charitable causes. Coordinates 47 degree 3725 and 122 degree 2044 W slash 47.62361 degrees north 122.34556 degrees west slash 47.62361. 122.34556 Pacific Northwest Criticism Lifespan Awards Notes and References
Gates Cambridge Scholarships, in 2000, the Gates Foundation donated $210 million to help outstanding graduate students from the U.S. and around the world to study at the prestigious University of Cambridge. The Gates Cambridge Scholarship has often been compared to the Rhodes Scholarship given its international scope and substantial endowment, the scholar remains extremely competitive with just 0.3% of applicants being selected. Each year, approximately 100 new graduate students from around the world receive funding to attend Cambridge University. Several buildings at the University of Cambridge also bear the name of William and Melinda Gates after sizable contributions to their construction.